Hey everybody, uh, my name is Jay Martin. Thanks for watching. This is a Napoleon game on the Syrian Ridge map, which is a pretty good map, really. Pretty good map. And um, this is a 2v3 game. I'm on the team with two players, and I'm on the left side here. That's me. And my partner for this game is Trip Hammer. And I don't recall offhand who our opponents were, but I do remember that Trip mentioned that. Uh, a couple of these guys are kind of regulars in our, in the games that we play. They they just always seem to join the games that we host, so they, they kind of knew the deal. They knew what was up, and they were pretty good players. And um, a bit of a confession to make. I don't have... When, when we played this game, I don't think I'd ever played this map on a 2v2 setting. And um, a, a couple things to maybe highlight for you is that Playing a two versus three game is a lot different than playing a three versus four or a two v two, um, and the reasons for that are obviously in a two v three the opponent has about you know thirty three percent more men than you do as opposed to the twenty five percent in a three v four, but there's another uh, qualitative difference is that when you have a three versus four, when you have three players, you can with three players control the entire width of the map. And that makes managing everything a little bit easier. But when you only have two players, you can't control the length of the map. So, in my opinion, uh, playing a two versus three is a lot more difficult than playing a three versus four. Um, and I imagine a one v two is even worse on the issue. But the the inability of us to control the entire length of the map, um, and now being outnumbered is one thing. That's that's not a huge deal, but. Um, if you can put units all across the length of the map, that makes your job a lot easier. And you notice some really symptoms of this, that Trip is already getting uh, flanked on his right, and he's having to form a, a hinge here. You know, he's got a right angle in his line to protect against this French player. This French player here is actually doing some really smart stuff. He's, you know, the first contingent of his army is moving here to threaten this direction, and he's moving around on the flank in this direction. So this guy is already getting on us. And uh, when Tripp and I were playing this game, I was like, dude, I have <laughs> I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. And he said kind of the same shit he always says, which is like, well, just, you know, play and we'll see what happens or something like that. But um, what I'm trying to do is contain, this is the leftmost French player. That's his entire army. He's coming around this flank. And so I'm just trying to form a line against him. Um, I don't really have much of a plan. I mean, I know that... Uh, I need to kind of destroy this army somehow while holding this army at bay, or you know what I mean. When you're when you're playing a two v three, the the both of you you gotta nibble away at them somehow, and um, it seems like their center player here is being a little more cautious. So the bulk of my army is deployed around this guy. I've got my cav hidden hidden in the uh, forest here, and my shogun experience is is really you know, and I learned a few lessons from Z. The hidden cav is, is a huge perk, but the problem is this guy keeps wrapping on my flank, so I'm going to have to retreat my hidden cav here without getting any uh, getting any use of it. The really interesting part earlier in the game is this French guy is super aggressive on his flanking maneuver. and This is actually a, a pretty good move for him. Uh, I mean, Trip Day is in the forest, so he's getting some protection, but this guy is able to just move a ton of units around. Uh, to be able to shoot at him and, and trip kind of you know has to pull back and respect the firepower and uh, he does that and, you know you can see him shifting more of his army this direction you are a real lesson here if you're on the team that outnumbers us we're holding this center French player back with relatively few units um, and that's letting us put the majority of our units on uh, on either flank there so you know maybe a lesson there coordination with your team you know and team coordination is actually really easy it's it's just y'all got to be doing the same thing at the same time if if one player is going to attack everybody's got to attack you know that's what you got to do that's what you got to do yeah and, and trip has a kind of a real problem here this guy is is moving really aggressively you can see him withdrawn try to control a, a better line and i i respect the aggression of the uh, rightmost french player here um, but, you know, the, the, I, you look at it either one of two ways. Either 
it's kind of his bad for not coordinating with the center player. The center player was too cautious. Some like that is uh, is what goes on. But this guy just goes all in for it. Yeah, and you know that might not be a bad idea if you're playing a two v three game. Then you can probably honestly say to yourself, well, it's it's okay if I die if I take out a bunch of casualties with me. You know, I, that that does make some sense. You know, in a way. That's what's happening. The same thing that was happening in the trip a minute ago is starting to happen with me. My guy's wrapping a bunch of line of tree on my flank here. and I got a little shootout with his uh, his volt and his line, and you can see this is me withdrawing away from it. I, I was in a real pickle. I remember when we were playing this game. I don't think I played a, a terribly good game here. Um, I had a, a lot of struggle getting my units into relevant firing positions. Like, all my light infantry is not really engaged here. Um, at this point when the game was going on, I was kind of thinking that I just really needed to withdraw and use this little uh, uh, lake here as kind of a, 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 a hinge point. And if I could hold, you know, him on the left side of that pond and you know, maybe use my lights to, to get in this gap here. You know, I don't know, but I kind of, I really did need to use that train. Uh, my opponent, uh, whoever I was playing here, he really used his cav really well there. He got two charges in with that cav. I squared, and he uh, withdrew without taking a whole lot of casualty, which bought him time to move his line up. That was, that was a really nice, uh, that was really good work. Uh, honestly, here in the middle there is we do have a bit of a firefight. The center player has finally moved up, and we're uh, not not in a terribly intelligent fashion. So uh, I'm able to get you know a little bit of firepower advantage there, which is nice, and that happens over there as well. Um, Trip has actually done really well. You know, um, I, I had the camera off the the area, but. The French player on his right, who just rushed in willy-nilly, um, kind of paid the price. Uh, Trip Hammer's patience there uh, paid off, and he's able to route uh, a lot of that French guy. And what Trip's trying to do right now is if he can wrap that uh, light unit out, that'll let him turn right around this this uh, lake here and uh, take out the rest of these units. Trip Hammer uh, rarely in these... Uh, uh, outnumbered games he takes no cav uh, he, he just takes no cav and that's probably smart but man one or two cav units really come in handy at the end I guess it's more of a team thing like as a team we were like you know I'll take two cav that's them there this is me retreating around that pond there my guys really uh, trying to get on my flank pretty good but uh, you man I'm always just like if you had one cav unit you know you could do so much damage like but uh, he makes do without it somehow. I think it'd be easier on him if he had one or two cab. But then, you know, you sacrifice the line unit. So, you know, I kind of get it. I kind of get it. I, it's obviously a a forced choice thing. Opportunity cost. You can do one or the other. You can't do both. But he's doing really well on this right flank. And, you know, this French guy is down to these units here, which I'm pretty sure, get, he's sure, uh, pretty sure that he can fight it out with. And I think that trip actually is... Uh, <laughs> he was asking me like, "How you doing, Jay?" And I was like, "Dude, I have, I have no idea what's going on." And I think these are his lights that he's moving. It, it becomes pretty evident right here that if I can give you a big, uh, big picture of you, the main problem for our, our uh, for our team is the movement on the French uh, left here. And so uh, he sends me some light infantry and. I just kite this guy like a bastard. I, I finally get all five of my lights involved. And, you know, early in the game, the the real mistake that I made in this game is um, I didn't put any overwhelming firepower in any one part of the map. And earlier, early in the game, I didn't do that. And that was a real flaw on my part. I was being reactive, but I wasn't being reactive terribly well. And so what that let happen is this French guy got all over me. Now, eventually at this point, you notice I got all five of my lights. I got a bunch of line over here. And once I do decide to commit firepower, now Trip Hammer's light showing up certainly helps, but once I do decide to commit firepower to this area of the map, things start going a lot, lot better for me. Uh, let me point a few things out to you. I, I've, I've, I'm pushing through the gap.
rep there. The, I mean, this guy is wrapped all the way around the pond, so this presents a flaking force that I can get onto his rear, and I'm pretty comfortable trading shots with my light infantry on him. Um, back back and forth. And this guy had some cav that did cause us. Actually, this guy's cav caused us quite a bit of problem, if I remember correctly. And and that was really complicated because those are trip hammers units, but he was really busy on the other side of the map over there. Um, and what he's doing right now is he's killed uh, the rightmost French guy, and he's able to move on and start engaging uh, the center French guy. And I think these are my... I think the, the line here is like right there and like these are my units and those are trips units and so trips got um some action on this guy so the main action of the game at this point is is certainly here and you notice uh you know we're just routing that guy there and once i well, you know what i really notice is once i put all my lights uh into the game and i just started shooting at him that I was finally able to really do some damage. You know, the, the, I think newer players are. I tell you what, Napoleon's are a really weird game if you're a new player to start playing because the 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 idea that you have to put your unit in there to get shot at and take casualties is really horrific for a new player. I remember uh, the first time I played it, and I was just really hesitant to engage because I didn't want to get casualties from my units. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but um, but. So new, newer players, one thing you got to do is you you got to put your people there in the line of fire. You, if you want to shoot, you're going to get shot at. And once I uh, once I started doing that, things got a lot better for me. And you can notice right here, I have cleared units around the end of the pond. I'm able able to envelop this French player here, and I have units moving up on his flank right there is what I'm able to do. Sorry, my camera work is not very good. And uh, it, it's pretty obvious at this point, if you look at it, let's look at it from this guy's perspective, that this guy's fucked. I mean, you know, th this little hammer of lights I got has really mowed through this section of the guy's line and, and trips moving up on this direction. So what what seemed a few minutes ago to be a huge problem for us really turned out to be... Um, a mop-up operation once I devoted a bunch of firepower to it. No, and um, and w this is, you know, what's left of the French player. And, and all we really did in this game, I want to say, is that, you know, we were pretty patient and let them come to us. We did take the first shot most of the time. But, uh, you know, we were playing outnumbered. That's that's what you got to do. And so we just got these guys surrounded here. And, and in the end... Um, you were able to surround this force here. I don't think that my flanking force that I got around here was really overwhelmingly powerful, but it, it might be a good example of this guy overextending his line. At some point, you want to focus on casualties you're dealing... There, there's, a, there's a distinction. You can either focus on um, a territory advantage, you know, uh, the ground that you're occupying, or casualties, and when you're playing the 2v3 game, you really got to focus on the casualties. And uh, anyway, I thought it was a, a neat game. I had a great plan, GG trip, and the other guys that we played against. He always beats me and kills me, and actually kick my ass and kills this game. But uh, anyway, GG guys, it was a fun game, and I'll see you in the next video.